All right, guys, so we're at the test and tune, and this car was for sale, and it's a swap meet also. So we actually ended up buying this thing. It's a 1964 Mercury, very cool car. So we're going, they're gonna actually deliver it for us. So we'll meet him over at our house and we'll do a better walk around of it. Pretty cool car. Alright guys, we just got this thing unloaded. It was kind of hectic. We left the track and then just got here. But this is the car that we found at the swap meet and I think it's really cool. We ended up working with our machinist. This is his grandfather's car and he ended up passing away and his dad inherited it. And it needs some work, but it's a very, very solid car. So this is a 1964 Mercury Montclair and it's super straight. There's no rust on it, hardly at all. It's pretty much what a Galaxy is, but a little bit nicer than a Galaxy. And it's a coupe, so it has this rear window that rolls down. So, pretty cool. Really, really solid. Definitely has been sitting for a very long time, but it's a really complete, nice car. So, the reason that they were getting rid of it was because it needs an intake manifold. This is a 390 FE. So the FEs kind of have that split head design where the intake goes over it. And the intake manifold isn't on it. But apparently the motor was rebuilt and the transmission was rebuilt. So we need an intake manifold for it, which there's one in the trunk. So we're going to source that, try to get this thing running, and then see what we can do with it. So really, really cool car. Very, very solid and too good of a deal to pass up. I think this thing is very, very solid for the age. Definitely set inside most of its life. So really happy we could jump on this. Didn't think that we were doing this today, but I'm really happy that we are. It's pretty cool. So now I really want to pressure wash it and see what this thing looks like. It is kind of dirty. It's definitely been sitting for a long time. The guy said it's been sitting in a garage for many years. So there's a lot of mold and stuff all over it. So at this time of year, it's starting to get dark soon. So I'm gonna pressure wash this thing and then push it in our garage so we can kind of take a better look at this and see what it's gonna take to get this thing back on the road. I got this thing in our garage here, but man, it's a tight fit. This thing is super long. It's crazy how big this car is, but you can get a little bit better look at it in here in the light, but there is not a dent or a scratch on this thing. It's in such good shape. It's crazy. I was sitting for so long. Nobody wanted to uh, put it back together. So. The story that I got on this thing is the guy that I got it from, his grandfather bought it and he drove it down from, it was originally from Pennsylvania, believe it or not, and it's super solid for a Pennsylvania car, but he drove it down in the early 80s and then he ended up taking it apart because it was smoking a little bit and he just thought that it was some piston rings went bad, so he ended up putting some piston rings in this thing and apparently went through the transmission as well. So this car is originally a two barrel intake on this and I assume that he swapped it for a four barrel intake and apparently it was an aluminum intake manifold and back then they were kind of hard to find so a friend needed it for a different car so they pulled it off of this car and never put anything back on it so it sat for many 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 years but it sat inside and as you can see, it's in such good shape. So 
The car doesn't have an intake manifold on it, but the motor looks very fresh inside. There is some surface rust and stuff, um, but it's still in pretty good shape. So I think we can clean this up, put a new intake on it, put a distributor on it, get everything hooked back up, and it should run and drive. The transmission, he said, worked pretty good in it, so the only issue with it was it was smoking. So apparently the guy refreshed the motor, refreshed the transmission, and then it was sitting, and then he pulled the intake off of it. So that's the story on this car, and it was kept in a garage ever since. But as you can see, I mean, it's in really, really good shape. It just has been sitting and it's very moldy and stuff like that. So, I mean, look at these seats, but pretty gross on the inside, but I think, you know, we can clean it up pretty nice. And what's nice about this is it's kind of like that Cadillac that we got where it was sitting outside and you definitely could tell the paint was all coming off and everything. You could tell a car had been sitting outside and all the interior was in the trunk and the weather. You can see the difference. I mean, this interior is definitely old and moldy, but we can clean that up really good and it'll make a huge difference. And it'll look almost brand new once we do so. So we're going to clean this thing up, see what works, what doesn't work. I really wanna see if this rear window goes up and down because that's one of the coolest aspects of this car. So I wasn't too familiar on these Mercury's whenever I saw it, but I did some research on these and we can kind of tell what this car is now. So this is a Mercury Montclair and Mercury had a few different trim levels of cars that they were selling back then. So if you saw in a previous episode when we went and picked that Nova up, that's the one of the first times I seen one of these breezeway roofs where the rear window comes down and that was a Mercury Monterey. And so those are a little bit more of a base model. So this is one step above that car. In 1964, they reintroduced the Montclair name. It was discontinued and then reintroduced in 1964. And then in 1965, they changed the body style. So this is a one year only body style for the Montclair. And then there's a body style greater than that, which has a fastback roof. And then they have a breezeway version of the Marauder. And so the Marauder was more of the high performance. We had the 300 something horsepower, 390 and all that stuff. You could get a four speed in it and everything, which is crazy because they actually raced that car in NASCAR. And this is such a huge car that that was a two door kind of sporty car back then and it doesn't even fit in their garage basically so pretty neat to see the history of this car and how this is kind of a mid-level and it doesn't have power windows or anything like that but that's kind of nice because we don't have to worry about electronics but back then they had two different roof styles so this is what they call the breezeway and so all these windows roll down and then this rear window rolls down and so you get a, an effect where all the air can go right through the top of it pretty neat and then they also had a fastback style like you see on the galaxies what's really cool about this car also is it is a full frame car so if you can see underneath this car has a full frame underneath of it like the regular galaxies so basically this is a galaxy frame with just a mercury body on it but you can see underneath, there's no rust on this thing, hardly at all. I mean, it's really, really good shape. There's, yeah, hardly any rust on this thing. The floors are in great shape. All the fender liners and everything are just really, really solid. So it's kind of crazy. Definitely been kept inside its whole life. Another thing that I did find out about this car is since that it's a two door hardtop, there's only 2,300 of the two-door hardtop breezeways made in 1964. So it's pretty cool since it's the one year only for the Montclair and 64. They only made a few of these in the two-door hardtop. Tons of them were four doors and tons of them were the Marauder style roof. 
but not many of them were made with the two-door hardtop breezeway. So that makes this thing even more rare, which is really neat. But that's kind of the rundown on the Mercury. So in the next episode, I think we're going to clean up the interior, see how we can transform that and just clean this thing up get it looking right and then eventually i'll have to find some parts but we will put this 390 back together get it running and driving and i'm gonna drive this thing so gotta get the brakes working and everything like that but this car is so solid and unique i've never seen one before and i'd really like to drive it so i'm going to fix the brakes try to put the motor together and i'm gonna get this thing running and driving and um, actually tag this car and drive it down the road. So hopefully I can get it together and you'll see that on the next episode. Hopefully we can get this car together. I'm gonna to order some parts for it. Try to find some intake manifolds. I'm trying to look for like an aluminum intake manifold or something a little bit better than the cast iron intake that was on this car. Try to get a carburetor for it and see what we're gonna do with this thing. And I'm gonna get this thing back on the road and you'll see that on another episode of Rusto Mod. So definitely stay tuned if you wanna see this thing get put back on the road and we can drive it around to car shows and a bunch of other stuff so stay tuned for that and we'll see you on the next episode